very last thing that I want to talk about in this lecture um, are these odd electron molecules that we call free radicals or sometimes just radicals, okay? And yes, if you've heard, uh, you know, I, I always think of like the Palm Wow commercials or like the orange juice commercials. Um, this fights anti-oxidizing free radicals. They're talking about odd electron molecules, okay? So, a free radical is a molecule or an atom that contains unpaired electrons, okay? That means they're very reactive. Electrons like to exist paired up if they can, right? So, but free electrons or free radicals, because they contain unpaired electrons, they're super reactive. They react very fast and they usually react very violently, okay? So free radicals are often excellent oxidizing agents because if you recall, oxidation is a loss of electrons. So free radicals are really good at stealing electrons from other things to pair up their missing electrons. So they're very reactive, okay? So here's two examples. So here's OH minus, so this is the hydroxide ion, okay, which we know contains um, oxygen is six electrons, hydrogen is one, and then there's a negative charge, plus one gives me eight valence electrons for hydroxide, OH minus. The Lewis structure we would come up with for this thing looks like this. So hydrogen duet rule, oxygen octet rule, and it's a negative ion, right? So it's gonna look something like that, okay? Now, what about OH without the minus? That's really important, that's not a typo. So when you see this in chemistry, um, you know, keep in mind that that's purposeful. We can have this thing called OH without the minus, this is called the hydroxyl radical, okay? And as it turns out, the hydroxyl radical is super important um, in Earth systems chemistry. Hydroxyl radical occurs naturally in our atmosphere, um, and it's often referred to as the Clorox bleach of the atmosphere. So it is a natural occurring oxidizing agent that's really good at reacting with organic molecules in the atmosphere. Okay, so it's something I study in my research. So now the hydroxyl radical is six oxygens plus one for hydrogen, but there's no negative charges, so that gets seven electrons, so that's an odd electron molecule, right? It's got an unpaired electron because it has seven. So hydrogen is still gonna follow the duet rule, but now what happens is, there we go, that oxygen only has seven. Two, four, six, seven. So that's the correct Lewis, Lewis structure for the hydroxyl radical, and it's extremely reactive. So this thing can strip electrons off of about damn near anything, okay? Which causes it to corrode and react away. So now what about nitrite, NO2 minus, okay? So we know nitrite has five for nitrogen and there's two oxygens and each one is six plus a negative charge. So that gives me 12, 17, that gives me 18 electrons. Everything's paired up. And if we were to do the Lewis structure, uh, let's actually do Clark's rule first. Six times three plus two gives me 20. So this has a double bond. Additionally, it has a resonance structure, okay? So it's gonna look like this, oxygen, double bond, nitrogen, single bond, um, because difference of two tells me one double bond, okay? Um, let me get rid of this guy right here. All right, so uh, let's see, two, four. Okay, brilliant. Um, and then we should note that, right, it's got a negative charge, okay? And additionally, there's a resonance structure, right? So the double bond 
can switch sides. Okay? Like that. Brilliant. Okay, minus. All right, very good. So now, what about this NO2? Okay? Sorry, I'm flipping to another source right now because I just thought of something that I want to make sure of. So what about this NO2? Well, if we were to count up these things, okay, um, then what we would actually find, okay, is that it has 17, right? You can see it's 5 plus 2 times 6, 5 for nitrogen plus 2 oxygens times 6, that gives me 17. But we know that we need to distribute 20 of these things around, all right? So when we go to do that now, we're going to have an oxygen, double bond nitrogen, single bond, okay, just like we did here. I'm going to put the electrons around the best way that I can. And keep in mind that what I want to be able to do is follow the, the rules for formal charge as well. And so what that means is nitrogen is going to take the radical. Excuse me, I forgot to put a two of them right there. Nitrogen is going to take the radical. Nitrogen is going to take the unpaired electron. And the reason for that is, is because now when I do these formal charges, okay, I know all double bonded oxygens, I remember from the last side, all double bonded oxygens are zero, all single bonded oxygens are negative one. And so now what's the formal charge on this nitrogen? Well, nitrogen is five, one, two, three, four, five, minus the dots plus sticks. So that's one dot plus one, two, three sticks. So uh, if you follow that formula quickly, that ends up being plus one. And that's not terrible for nitrogen. Better to be plus one on nitrogen than plus one on oxygen. Because if we put the radical on the oxygen, then the oxygen would be a zero, but a single bonded oxygen really wants to be a negative one, okay? So, and of course, we still have a resonance structure where this can now um, flip, the oxygen can flip the other side, right? But the radical is still, <laughs> ah, bless me. The radical is still in the nitrogen. And so this also makes NO, um, NO2 rather, excuse me, extremely reactive. All right, so there's one more example that I want to bring up, okay, while we're talking about oxides of nitrogen. And that's NO, the NO molecule, okay? And so the NO molecule is also a radical. I'm just going to quickly draw that Lewis structure for you. Okay, NO, nitrogen monoxide, looks like this. And there's also a radical on the nitrogen, okay? And we know NO2 looks like this, so those are extremely reactive. So why am I talking about NO and NO2? Well, as it turns out, NO and NO2 make up what we call NOx, which we call NOx. For those of you that live in California, particularly Southern California, you might have heard of NOx. NOx is a precursor to smog. That's right, that brown crap in the air, particularly the Los Angeles air. Um, it is made from these two radicals, from NO and NO2. Well, where do these two radicals come from? Well, as it turns out, they come from the following reaction, nitrogen plus oxygen under really high heat make NOx. So it goes back and forth between NO and NO2 because they're so reactive, okay? So where could we get enough heat to generate that? Not on a hot day, because even on a hot day, we've got plenty of nitrogen and oxygen that we're able to breathe. It's not forming NOx, because that would poison us if we breathed it in, okay, NOx, NOx, NO and NO2 is very toxic, um, just like the OH radical, all these radicals are toxic for us because they are extremely reactive, okay, um, so where does it come from? Well, you can get enough heat to generate this in a tailpipe 
of the internal combustion engine. That's right, your automobile. The engine and the tailpipe in your car get hot enough to actually make nitrogen and oxygen in the air, right? In the ambient air surrounding your automobile. Uh, it, it makes it hot enough to form these NO and NO2 radicals which get pumped out into the atmosphere and they chew apart damn near anything and they go on to form smog. So this is why you get your car smog checked. You get your car smog checked to prevent the buildup of NOx. So what builds up the NOx? Maybe you car heads already know. It's your catalytic converter. Your catalytic converter prevents the buildup of these radicals. So that's why you should definitely take getting your car smog checked seriously. This is my public service announcement from one California to another Californian, okay? Keep our air clean. Get your car smog checked. Take that rule seriously. Um, because without that rule in place, our air pollution would be awful, okay? So, and you can definitely read more about that and I can talk to you more about that if you like. Um, the book has some really cool information about NOx and smog and your catalytic converter.